Scientists from around the world are being attracted to the southern pole of the moon and India's Chandrayaan-3 will land there tomorrow that is on 23rd August. Why is the south pole of the moon so special? Let's find out in this video. India's lunar mission Chandrayaan-3 is all set to land on the southern pole of the moon. On the evening of August 23rd, ISRO, the Indian Space Agency, will conduct its soft landing, which has the attention of the entire world. So, what is it about the southern pole of the moon that is attracting scientists from around the globe? Scientists believe that there are deep craters on the moon, where sunlight hasn't reached for billions of years. In these regions, temperatures drop dramatically, reaching as low as minus 248 degrees Celsius. And then as you know, there is no atmosphere on moon to heat the moon's surface. No human has ever set foot in this completely unknown world of the moon. I am talking about the southern pole. Now you are aware that there is a so-called space race going on to reach the southern pole of the moon. This location is far away from where the six American Apollo missions landed on the moon near the equator. Before ISRO, Russia had a lunar mission, Luna 25, that planned to land on the southern pole of the moon. But on August 20, it lost signal and crashed on the moon's surface, leading to the mission's failure. But they don't intend to stop, they have more missions lined up. China has plans scheduled for next year. The United States plans to land astronauts on the moon's south pole by 2025. Even Japan plans to land a robotic spacecraft on the moon's south pole in 2029. So, you see the race to reach the southern pole of the moon is going on in full swing and it is likely that several more countries will join and succeed in the coming years. However, as of now, no country has ever made a soft landing on the moon's south pole and if Chandrayaan-3 successfully lands, then India will be the first country to do so, leaving behind major countries like the United States and China. Anyhow, coming back to the main question, why is the southern pole of the moon so attractive to scientists? Let me lay out the possibilities instead of giving one fixed answer. There are only two reasons why countries are interested in moon. Number one, since the moon revolves around the earth, it is logical as well as sensible enough to reach and build infrastructure at the nearest celestial body before venturing out into the unknown space. This is one strong reason. And the second reason is to study and further expand the knowledge of material science because the moon is earth's closest celestial neighbor there is a belief that its surface contains various rare earth elements. Therefore, if any nation can analyze the lunar soil or rock composition, it can determine if any of these elements are present in a manner similar to what is found on earth. Now, suppose we do discover unfamiliar elements on the moon. In that case, the next step would involve bringing samples back to earth and studying them to recreate them artificially or searching for substances on earth that closely resembles those elements. And once we humans achieve significant success in uncovering or replicating these rare earth elements, do you know how it will help a country? Now typically the government is not going to release those elements into the commercial market. First, they will be used for advancing military technology because that is what is going to give any country an edge over others. After the military has initially harnessed the innovation, it is then gradually introduced into the commercial market in a very slow and calculated manner. This is why you often observe that military technologies worldwide tend to be more advanced than what we encounter in the commercial market. These are the only two reasons why many countries are interested in moon and there are no other reasons involved. And let me also tell you why countries are exclusively interested in reaching the southern pole of the moon and not considering other locations. And the reason behind that is, you have to understand that the same side of the moon always faces the earth. The side of the moon that faces the earth is called the near side and the far side of the moon is the side that we can never see from earth. The only time the far side of the moon can be seen from earth is during a lunar eclipse when the moon passes between earth and the sun. Now imagine that you are standing on the moon facing earth. That means even we can see you from earth. So this is called the near side. The north pole of the moon is the point directly above you and the south pole is the point directly below you. If you know the moon's axis is slightly tilted. That means this is the North Pole and this is the South Pole of the Moon. And one more thing, the North Pole and the back side of the Moon barely have any craters, while the South Pole as well as the front side of the Moon is more heavily filled with craters. And then I said in the beginning, these deep craters are on the Southern Pole of the Moon, where sunlight has never reached for billions of years. In these regions, temperatures drop dramatically, reaching as low as minus 248 degrees Celsius. And then there is also no atmosphere here to heat the Moon's surface. 
India's Chandrayaan-1 launched in 2008 was the first mission to search for evidence of water on the moon. Water exists on the moon in solid or vapor form due to the vacuum of space. What is more interesting is that water here is preserved for millions of years and completely unexposed from the sun's radiation. Now this information is quite valuable to analyze and understand the history of water in our solar system. In my opinion, the exploration and examination of water on the moon primarily serve the purpose of facilitating future space missions. This is because transporting water from earth to moon is a costly endeavor. Hence, the discovery of lunar water or ice could be utilized as a valuable resource for fuel, oxygen and drinking water for upcoming lunar missions. Furthermore, the investigation of lunar water can satisfy the inquisitiveness of academic scientists regarding the origins and arrival time of the water. And besides that, I don't believe there is any other intention behind discovering water on the moon, as there is no plan to establish a pipeline from the moon to supply water back to Earth. So overall, the main reason behind the moon race is number one, build infrastructure at the nearest celestial body before venturing out into the unknown space. And number two, to study and further expand the knowledge of material science so that governments and countries can acquire knowledge and create things that will help countries progress and excel a bit further than others. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.